Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Todd Larson. I'm the president of Khalifa University. It's a great pleasure to, to welcome everybody back to the next installment of the Distinguished Speaker Series. I think as many of you know, who've participated in this in the past, what we try to do through this series is kind of highlight interactions between technology and society. Uh, and particularly maybe to highlight some of the issues and p potential solutions for those uh, that, are, that correspond to critical challenges in the world today. Subject of my talk this evening is success and failure. They are not always leak, leak, linked, but today I'm going to uh, link them in, I hope, a convincing way. These are concepts that are as old as engineering itself. As long as there has been uh, building there have been building failures for reasons that were uh, probably mostly related to the you, you didn't want to uh, put obstacles in the way of first class passengers moving freely around their decks. So the ship's bow dips further down and after there's a point of no return and the ship's stern rises out of the water, the ship breaks in two. This is actually what happened to the Titanic and none of this is obscure or should have been obscure at the time of the design of the ship. So the Titanic sank on its maiden voyage, as everybody knows. But it wasn't because there was an overconfidence that the ship is not going to hit an iceberg, the ship is not going to get a, a large hole in its hull, and so forth and so on. Also, uh, this bridge, which spans the same distance, about 500 feet here, this, this bridge uh, accomplished the same uh, technical uh, uh, challenge that the other one did. You wrote your book, uh, Change in Years, even many years ago. Uh, who would you change about it if you wrote it nowadays? And I would say the only thing that would, I would change. I wouldn't change anything about the basic argument. I would add some more contemporary uh, failure examples, uh, which, in, in my opinion, and I let the reader be the judge, but they just support the thesis of the book. They don't contradict it. I, I haven't seen any examples that contradict what I wrote here. Yeah, very good. I'd like to ask the audience to join me. Thank you. Can you tell us what is the significance of having such lectures open to the public? Well, well, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed my visit. Uh, I like to have these lectures open to the public because I think the basic ideas of engineering, that especially those that I'm talking about, are really accessible to the public, and I think it helps them understand engineering and the problems that engineers face. Well, I, I think my lecture is not the kind of lecture I would give to a class in a, in a formal course. It, it, it tries to look at a bigger issue, uh, overarching uh, issues that span a lot of different aspects of engineering. And although I spoke about bridges, I spoke about largely civil engineering structures, the underlying lessons are meant to be more general than that. And so bridges are more, more a metaphor for uh, engineering designs generally. And I think usually my experience has been usually the audience can make that transition to their own specialty. Well, I think you know, civil engineering is, is really as old as history is. I mean, it's, it's a very old profession and it's what made civilization possible. So the relevance of, of uh, history to civil engineering today is that we learn about how things were done in the past. And as I tried to say in my lecture, I believe that the methods of design, the process of design, is essentially timeless. And the ancient engineers followed a process that's very similar to ours, which is namely at first somebody gets an idea, a concept, a flash of inspiration. It's very, very akin to art in that way. It's just like an artist or a writer, a poet, getting an idea and then having to work out the details. Uh, these poems, artworks, they don't come out of the blue, uh, totally finished. They, the inspiration comes, and there's a lot of hard work in polishing and getting a final draft. And that's the way it is with engineering also. Distinguished Speaker Series lectures, if they're open to the public, they will help the public uh, ha have a good idea about what engineering really is. And they will have a good perspective about uh, what engineers do daily and uh, what they face and uh, what, what challenges they have to overcome.
become good engineers. I think there will be a great public uh, interest in the engineering if, this, uh, if these lectures were spread around the public, especially for the young generations, because all these uh, lectures, they um, provoke the students and uh, they encourage them to enter the engineering uh, field due to the um, amazing gains that they can come, uh, the amazing opportunities that they can have in the engineering field, the amazing uh, chances that, that they can gain and the amazing future that they can develop through entering the engineering field. Well, I think, I think there's a couple of things we're trying to accomplish with the series. One is we would really like to reach the public. Uh, we would like to interact with the public a little more. We'd like to um, sort of explain in a way that supporters of the university and people who live in Abu Dhabi can understand how engineering tries to contribute, you know, what engineers do, how it interrelates with the priorities that society has. So, I think part of it is to have kind of a dialogue with the public, but then I think the other big goal that we have is for our students. You know, we want our students to be able to, you know, interact with famous engineers and famous technologists and people who've sort of succeeded in having visibility for technology and engineering in the public and I think it's a very exciting thing for the students too. So those are probably a couple of the more important goals we have. I think the major growth that I've seen has been the interest in the students. Uh, you know, I think we have very loyal, you know, followers who come to this series from other universities, obviously from Khalifa, our staff, our faculty, um, you know, other companies and, and entities around town, but where I think I've seen the most consistent growth is in the number of students who come. And actually not just Khalifa University students, we get students from NYU, we get students from Mazdar, and I think that's good. I, I am really pleased to see that because the, the series is largely for them. We really try to pick people who have a good story to tell. Uh, and uh, and we've had, we've had you know, speakers in the past from biotechnology, we've had them from security studies, we've had civil engineers like we had tonight. And I think maybe that's the other criterion we try to do. We try to, to sample from some of the different areas of engineering and technology that we feature at Khalifa. And it's a way of highlighting our programs as well. So we'll be looking for high impact speakers, no doubt. Uh, my name is Muna Aqil Barbad. I'm a sophomore electronic engineer at Khalifa University. Uh, can you tell us if this is your first DSSP? Um, yes, it is. Yeah. What did you learn from um, it? The way he speaks and the way he explains the thing, because uh, I've been one of the uh, group, uh, reading group. Uh, we read his book and he basically explained the book very easily about like uh, in how engineering is about failure and success. Do you think that this uh, kind of lectures are very interesting for students? It is, because it really simplifies many things that we don't have in lectures. The uh, Distinguished Speakers series will help me to exchange knowledge with other people rather than students.